Search and Engineering will give the next presentation to require image recorders. Good morning. There is only one issue area concerning aviation flight recording devices that still remains on the current most wanted list, and that is for the FAA to require cockpit image recorders on both large transport category aircraft and on smaller commercial aircraft that are not currently equipped with flight recorders. In September of 2009 letter to the board, the FAA re reiterated their longstanding position that they are not initiating any rulemaking concerning cockpit image recordings. They continue to cite the recommendations developed by the 2002 RTCA Future Flight Data Recorder Committee work, which stated that there were significant data protection obstacles present in the international community that presented, prevented the implementation of cockpit image recorders. While the, FAA staff, while the safety board staff disagrees with the FAA's interpretation of the RTCA reports, the FAA remains resistant to any cockpit image rulemaking. The FAA continues to cite that the new flight, data, flight recorder rule, which was issued in March of 2008, will make significant enhancements to the collection of useful data after an accident or incident investigation, and when implemented, will mitigate the need for additional cockpit image recording devices. According to this rule, by April of 2010, all air, new aircraft will be equipped with a two-hour cockpit voice recorder that has a 10-minute backup battery power supply, increase the sample rate of flight control parameters, and record digital data link messages. This past month, the aircraft industry petitioned the FAA to delay the implementation of the enhancements required by this March 2008 rule, citing the lack of time to affect the changes and the unavailability of necessary equipment. The FAA stated in their proposed NPRM that they were disappointed with the industry and would be forced to extend the compliance date six months to December of 2010. The staff continues to believe that a cockpit image recording device would provide invaluable information during our accident and incident investigations, especially on these smaller turbine-powered aircraft where a lightweight cockpit image recorder is the most practical means of capturing cockpit information. In the international arena, several flight recorder improvement, including the installation of cockpit image recording devices, is successfully progressing through the ICAO rulemaking progress. In January of this year, the Air Navigation Council of ICAO approved the inclusion of a cockpit image recording requirement as a recommended practice for all ICAO member nations. This endorsement by the ANC committee is a big step in getting us through the ICAO re regulatory process. As I reported last year, several of the U.S. helicopter manufacturers are slowly developing programs to equip their models with onboard rec image recording devices. Both Eurocopter USA and recently Bell Textron have partnered with Aperio Systems in the development of a low-cost, lightweight image audio data recorder. While this certification effort is continuing, no aircraft are currently equipped with such a device. Additionally, the Flight Safety Foundation is currently sponsoring a trial program to outfit several EMS helicopters with onboard recording devices. This program is designed to explore what is the best onboard recording device needed to support a continuous SMS focal monitoring program. Both traditional FDR CVR recorders and a cockpit image recorder are being evaluated as part of this study. On the equipment side, the largest traditional recorder manufacturer, L3 Communications, has certified and is currently selling a low-cost, lightweight, crash and fire-hardened combination data, voice, and image recorder. The staff views this recorder development by an industry leader as a very positive sign that there is enough interest in the marketplace for these type of products. Hopefully, we will start to see a voluntary equipage of such devices. That completes the staff presentation. Are we were ready to respond to any questions the board may have. Member Sumwalt. Thank you, Mr. Cash. I probably misheard you, but did you say there was just one, one recommendation under this issue area? There's actually, well, there's four, I believe, but it's a, kind of in two sets. One is for the large aircraft uh, cockpit image recorder, which would be a supplemental to the uh, recorders that are currently on large airplanes, so it would be a CVR, FDR, and an image. The other set kind of deals with re, uh, aircraft that are turbine-powered, uh, smaller aircraft that are currently not equipped with anything. 
Thank you. And I think, I think actually in looking it over, there's, there's, there appears to be three recommendations. And so we've got uh, um, o, A, O, O, A, O, O, 30, and then 31, right? And then A, O, 9-10. And the, the two uh, issued in 2000 deals with retrofit for, for small aircraft and then and then forward fitting from that point forward. Is that yes. is that correct? Yes. And then the uh, okay, yeah. Mr. Halbert. As you know, uh, having flown airplanes for a living for for a fairly lengthy time, I'm very interested in the protections that might be in place, uh, especially with the thought of cockpit video. And uh, just to refresh my memory, uh, please. Uh, Please give me an idea of what protections may be in place or what protections are in place for that could be extended to cockpit video. Yes, Member Sumwalt, you and I have discussed this on previous occasions, and I understand your concern about the protections under our statutes uh, for the use in safety investigations, whether once we obtain those devices we can continue to protect those, for example, in the face of a Freedom of Information Act request and um, protections perhaps in litigation, which is also addressed within our organic statutes. Uh, specifically, uh, the, the Congress has anticipated this situation uh, at our urging, and uh, in addition to the standard protections under 49 U.S.C. 1114 for cockpit voice recorders, the statutes were amended to include surface voice recording devices and again amended to include image recording devices. So under 1114, the NTSB can use those for safety purposes but may not publicly disclose those uh, images or the actual recordings. Uh, we may release a uh, transcript that's relevant to an accident investigation of a voice recording and we may re release a written description of an image to support our accident investigation report. And then under 49 U.S.C. 1154, there are constraints on how they may be used in litigation. In, in essence, it requires a judge to review them in camera, in, in his chambers, so to speak, uh, and make a determination that release is essential to a fair trial before they may come into that judicial proceeding. Okay, thank you. So uh, 49 U.S.C. 1114 does provide the same protections for the, audio, for the video as it, as it has uh, done for a while for audio both 1114 for us and 1154 for the judicial proceedings. Right. Okay. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. Vice Chairman Hart. Thank you for that presentation. I don't have any questions at this time except to note that you have a Freudian slip typo on the next to the last line on page 11 of the draft report where you say, although conventional cockpit video recorders, and I'm sure what you meant is although conventional cockpit voice recorders. So I figure that's I assume that was a typo. Thank you. Um, here's my question. So uh, I'm not. I'm sure you're not going to be surprised by it. Uh, I'm curious as to why recommendation 0910 that superseded AO364 is in an acceptable status when the FAA has made it very clear. Uh, to us that they don't intend to pursue uh, requiring video recorders. Uh, this, this recommendation in particular applies to uh, the turbine-powered uh, aircraft um, that are not equipped with cockpit voice recorder um, and ask them uh, to utilize the Euro-K standard uh, in putting something on. I think uh, what we know is that um, the technology exists. It complies with the standards. Manufacturers can buy it off the shelf, and some are voluntarily implementing it um, and utilizing it uh, across the board in uh, some of their uh, equipment designs. So um, has the FAA indicated to us, given us any reason uh, to keep this in an acceptable status, that they're going to pursue this? Chairman, I'd like to field this question. I did have a conversation with the REC specialist about why AO910 was open acceptable. and. Uh, you know, it was a new recommendation. It superseded a previous one, and based on their initial response, the response was, shall we say, favorable. 
but we just, okay, this is your first response to the recommendation, and so we proposed open acceptable at the time in August time frame. I do want to note, however, that in a very recent conversation I had with um, the FAA, as in like the last 24 hours, I was given every indication that there is no expectation FAA is going to require Im uh, cockpit image recorders. Okay. Then with that um, new information uh, and the responses that we have in their written correspondence with us, does staff believe that we should classify this as an acceptable response? Uh, from my perspective, I would say no. Okay. I have no objection. Okay. Um, any other comments from the uh, board members? Uh, do we have any uh, motions uh, from the board members? Um, I move to um, uh, change the classification from AO9-10 from open acceptable response to open unacceptable response. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, signal with a hand and aye. 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 The ayes have it. The classification of AO910 has been changed to open unacceptable response. Is there a motion uh, to adopt the uh, um, issue area and uh, status proposed by staff? So moved. Second. All in favor, signal with a hand and aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, we require cockpit image recorders uh, on the most wanted list um, and retain the resi de red designation uh, has been uh, adopted unanimously. Are we ready for the uh, next issue area? We have to change a few staff, but we'll be momentarily. Thank you to the uh, staff for that presentation. Vice Chairman Hart suggests that this might be a good time to take a break, and I think we, we would all agree. Um, we'll take a quick break and be back at 11.15.